Hello everyone and welcome back to Get Fit Guy. This is Kevin Don. Firstly, I want to take a moment to thank everyone that emailed me after last week's episode. I've replied very briefly to some to express my gratitude, but to everyone that emailed me, I want you to know I got your email and I read it. And I really can't tell you enough how much it means to me that you took the time to sit down and write well wishes to a voice on the other end of a podcast. But yes, more than that, I am a human, one that has ups and downs like everyone else. I'm not a robot. And I also never considered the number of emails I would have from listeners who are also having a hard time and appreciating that they're not alone, or from those that just realized that even people that might appear to have all their ducks in a row may also have problems, big ones. It can help to know that we aren't alone and also to know that we can't ever know other minds. And it's good to try and be kind because we don't know the pain that someone else may be in behind their public facing mask. As far as this podcast goes, perhaps it's also made me rethink my own style too, in the sense that maybe it's really useful for both listeners and me to talk more openly, useful for listeners to connect to a real person and useful for me because it's cathartic. So let's see what happens. Maybe my personality and a weekly update on my life might humanize me more for people and to help people feel more connected. On that front, this week I did successfully move to the University of Edinburgh. As you know, if you're a regular listener, I'm studying philosophy. Something that took me by surprise, though, that I hadn't considered when I was going to uni was ageism. It hadn't occurred to me at all that that would be something I experienced. And so far, I've been challenged three times by the security in my student accommodation about who I am and asking me to provide my student identification. Whilst I'm happy that they're being attentive to strangers, I can't say that being stopped because to them I look too old to be a student makes me feel great. Uh, A 19-year-old girl I sat next to this morning at my welcome talk and I introduced myself, asked me, why are you going to university at your age? And the answer to that is actually quite complex. I mean, first of all, when I was 16, I was kicked out of home by my father, which meant I was unable to graduate high school or go to college. I had to immediately go to work to survive. I've um, cleaned cars by hand, I've sold things door to door, and eventually able to use my martial arts skills to coach people and embarked on a big journey of self-education and strength and conditioning where I was able to train with Olympians and world champions in different sports and, and really learn a lot from them that I could take into my own coaching practice. But I always had a burning desire to use my intellect and to be able to overcome what I saw as an injustice that I never got to finish school due to family dynamics. Aside from that, I think fitness itself lacks the sense of achievement that humans love to have. Like you might attain those in a more traditional career, but you can't really work hard and become the vice president of cardio training one day. So here we are and Kevin is at university. But enough of that. Let's get to what I want to chat about this week, which is the difference between sport, training, and working out. And I was inspired to discuss this when I went to the University of Edinburgh Sports Fair just this morning. 71 sports. I couldn't believe it. Unbelievable choice. Really fantastic. And I've signed up to do judo, but I've also taken the opportunity to try some new sports, which I'm going to narrow down to one new sport, to play over the next few years. And the sports I'm trying are polo, yachting, and fencing. And I'm really excited to try polo and hopeful I don't fall off a horse and break something on day one. I'm quite confident I can play these sports because I have a broad base of physical skills. Which brings me to the first thing I noticed. There were 71 sports that literally anyone could just go and do without ever having done them before, but no preparatory systems in place. There's no training for those clubs. There's no strength club or a kind of 
broad base of physical skills or cardio club. So without a broad base, it seems to me anyway, a bit crazy that one could just dive into a sport that one has never played. Of course, we have the metric of just enjoyment of trying new things. But if you've never done heavy squats, you've never done sprints and you weigh 100 pounds, how are you really going to cope at the rugby club? Like, And if you can't hold isometric core contractions, have weak wrists and forearms and can't do a pull up, how are you going to do it gymnastics? And this to me is the difference. So training is where you prepare yourself to be able to execute a performance. In terms of sport, that's a scenario where you ignore all of the signals from your body in order to achieve a win from another player. You can't possibly expect to make a successful performance without ever training for said performance. But further to this, we should also recognize that sports themselves make our bodies move in limited ways that are self-selected by those sports. Boxers, for example, because they've got their guard up to protect their faces, a lot of times tend to have very internally rotated shoulders and a very rounded upper back. And over time, this could be correlated with issues in bicep tendons and in the front of the shoulder. Boxers might want to think about hedging against that kind of thing by doing single arm face pulls, bent over dumbbell rows, and that would help to balance things out and build rear shoulder strength. Thing, same thing with martial arts. I think about karate and taekwondo that are more kick focused and use a lot of quadriceps to extend the leg. So perhaps they might consider working the hamstring whilst it wouldn't directly help the sport, but it could hedge against the injury of being imbalanced front to back. So for those of us that just want to get fit and be healthy, is sport the way forward? Because there are a lot of different sports clubs out there, as I found at the university today. And the answer for me is that sports clubs have added benefits that training alone at the gym might not have. You've got social networking, camaraderie, and these have great benefits for mental health and self-esteem. But we should be careful to make sure that we don't give up our training just to focus on sport. As noted, it could be that sport could develop a specific physique or movement pattern that could result in a physical imbalance or even worse, an injury. So I think the best way to approach this is to make sure that you do both things if you want. So you can go and do your sports for healthy competition, friendship building, and sense of belonging. But we should also make time to train for that sport so that we're hedging against any injuries caused by lack of movement in all of the other patterns we could make. For example, a sprinter only moves forwards. To be healthy, maybe we should consider moving backwards and sideways and maybe even inverting yourself. And what about working out? Isn't training and working out just the same thing? Well, I would argue that working out is actually very different. Working out is something that you do just for how it makes you feel in that moment. If you've had a whole pizza to eat last night, you might wake up this morning and decide to go and get on the treadmill. But you're not then going to get on the treadmill again in two days to either increase your distance or decrease the time it took. So therefore, you're not training. For it to be training, there needs to be a goal and an intention. It might not be a long-term goal or it might not even be a very lofty intention, but it would still have to have that direction. If you just feel bloated, because you drank too much over the weekend and go for a spin class, that's not intentional as part of a training plan. It's spontaneous and it's responsive to a specific situation in your life. So for me, that's the difference. Sport is a performance. Training is preparation for injury-free sport or a goal in your life. And working out is something that you just do. It might just make you feel good in the moment and it has no specific plan and no goal. If you have any questions for me, or you just like to say hi, have a chat about anything I talk about the show, or even just want to, you know, talk to me about philosophy or something, send me an email on getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. Get Fit Guy is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. Thanks to the team at Quick and Dirty Tips, Morgan Christensen, Holly Hutchings, Brandon Getches, Davina Tomlin, and me, Kevin. If you have a question for me, you can also leave me a voicemail as someone has done in the past, 
510-353-3104, or again, email me, getfitguyatquickanddirtytips.com. For more information about the show, visit quickanddirtytips.com or check out the show notes in your podcast app. <laughs>